Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be showing you my approach to doing the painterly style. Oh boy. What do I mean by the painterly style? There are two ways of coloring in an image generally. One is with line art where you do final lines and then you color in said lines to make a very clean, crisp look. And then there's a blendy style which is having little to less line art which makes it look more painterly. <laughs> That's why it's called that. And uh, with it, you can get different kinds of effects. Just looking at this, this versus this, uh, you can you can clearly see the example in those two. Now, fun idea in question. Well, how the heck do you do it? Um, so I'm just gonna start here. I have a canvas that has nothing on it, and as you know, before you can really paint anything onto it, it'd be good to have a sketch. So uh, let's just go ahead and uh, do that. <laughs> All right, we got our sketch in here, and as you can see, I have two main layers right now. I have a background layer and I have a sketch layer. Now, take note with the sketch, you want to be as neat as possible. Not necessarily line art quality, but you wanted to make it neat because this is going to be your guideline. Because wherever these lines go you're gonna need to eyeball it you'll get to a point where you're not even using now in order to do this what you're gonna need to do is establish a light source like in anything else there's a lot of different ways of going about this some people work in grayscale some people work in color um, however you decide to do that is necessarily up to you now I'm gonna be using two kinds of brushes primarily to do this image. The first one is to establish and block in limits. If you know anything about clipping masks, then it's a magical, I make a shape and then you can't possibly color outside of that shape kind of deal. Which is really nice and it'll be useful later. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to be using the round brush in here in Photoshop. And then when I actually get to the painting part of it, I'm gonna be using the square brush. The reason I use a square brush is because it has uneven textured edges, so that's going to make it look more painterly. Or you can honestly use whatever kind of brush you want, but these are going to be the main two that I'm going to be using. So using the hard brush here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and more or less block in um, just with gray. I'm using gray, but you can use whatever color you want. Uh, and this is just underneath so you'll see that I have the sketch layer here and then here we'll, we'll name this layer like gray just so I know what I'm looking at <laughs> okay so I've gotten to the point where everything's blocked in you'll see this I have all of the shapes closed off now I know what you're thinking next step is to go in and meticulously fill this in right I mean no you can't no you can but don't please no stop it stop it <laughs> get help we're not cavemen we have technology <laughs> Um, what I'm going to be doing is actually a process that's going to be saving you a lot of time, but in order to do this, you need to ensure that the edges are closed. You're going to see here, I have the gray layer. I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to go to the paint bucket tool over here, and then I'm going to make sure that this all layers button up here is actually checked. Go ahead and get that boy in. This guy right here, he's going to be your best friend. <laughs> created this new layer to do a flood fill, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in. And you see it's all quick and nice and convenient, but wait, hold on, we have a problem. There, there's these little white fuzzy lines that we have here. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, it, it's a simple fix, just, just go over them like this. And you know what? No, it takes time. And if you're doing anything with art, you know that it's about being lazy. Put in as little effort as possible to make it look decent. <laughs> so I have a little shortcut for you guys. Con if you hold control or command, depending on what you're using, PC is the superior race, I'm going to be clicking on this layer itself and it'll automatically select all the content of that layer. Remember I filled it in on a separate layer than the gray layer, this one's above it, and I'm actually going to go over here to select, modify, then expand, and what this will do is it'll expand a selection, it'll bring up a little window here, and it'll tell you by how many pixels you want to expand it. So these little ant lines you'll see, however many pixels I pick, it'll shoot outwards in every single direction. So I'm gonna hit two because that should cover the thing and then I hit okay and then move the selection out a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a big brush and then just color over that and then deselect it. And you'll see, oh, hey, lines are conveniently colored in. That's neat, that saved us a lot of time. And uh, from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and merge down these two layers until they're one and it's just a gray layer there and you'll see that we have a base. I'm gonna call this the base color. The reason I did that is for a clipping group. This doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the sketch yet, but you'll see with this base, if I create a new layer, now I can color outside of it, and you'll see that this doesn't really help me that much, but hold on. If you hit Control-Alt-G, what the? 
You see there's this little arrow right here. What does that do? It means that's the magical can't color outside of the lines button. And uh, essentially what we'll be able to do with that is just work on this drawing relentlessly without ever going outside the lines. And it'll just make your life so much easier, especially when you're working on it. Isn't that great? It's amazing. Saves you a lot of time. Clipping masks. Learn them. Use them. Love them. What I'm going to be using that for is to do the coloring. This is how I keep it inside the lines without using line art. And I'm going to use the sketch as a reference, but what I want to do now is actually block in a couple of colors. What I want to do in this stage is just primarily figure out what the heck I'm doing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to that square brush that I was telling you guys about. And it's good if it has an opacity jitter, meaning it just messes with the actual intensity of the color. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in. At first, I'm going to go in with flat colors. A good thing to know with this is this process does not need to be perfect. Actually, the more messy, the better, just because you might mix a lot of colors that might work to your advantage later. Her actual sweater is gray, so, you know, I, I saved some time on that, I guess. Um, I didn't tell you guys what I was using as the reference. So, in this, it's for this particular drawing, I'm actually using the new character from the Pokemon Shield and Sword games. I'm not emotionally invested and didn't buy a Switch for that. You did. All right, now I have this space uh, coloring in. Now I know what you're thinking. This doesn't exactly look too fantastic yet, but this was just more to establish those colors and they're not outside the lines. And what I'm going to want to do from this point forward is actually establish a light source. You don't want to zoom in and get into the nitty gritty details of the drawing right away. You'll have a lot of inconsistent light sources and details that are, honestly you won't be able to see from a good distance. You want to see how well the image reads clearly from far away because your audience probably isn't going to be seeing the image for like this close up the first time they encounter it. They're gonna see it like this, so you wanna be thinking the entire full picture kind of thing. So just make sure you don't zoom in too much. It's great that you can, but don't get carried away. I'm going to be filling in a lot of just blocky shapes to figure out the light source. I'm thinking that it's gonna be in the top over here, <laughs> in the here region. Now these colors don't look exactly too fantastic yet, but here's where the actual refinement process comes in. This was just a block in colors. So I'm gonna name this like blocky, Goodness, there we go. This layer is blocky goodness. And then this is the part where it's gonna be creative again. Now you'll see that this layer isn't doesn't have a little arrow by it, so uh, that's a problem. That means it's not clipped. Control Alt G. Bad, the problem is fixed. Now you can consistently keep working inside the layers without ever coloring outside of them. Just uh, remember to do that. Unless you intentionally want things outside, like a background, then don't clip it. <laughs> Uh, from this point onwards, what I'm going to do is with this sketch, I'm actually going to lower the opacity on it so it's visible, but not distracting. From this point on, because remember, we're not going to be keeping it, you want to work on the image in a way that you slowly do away with that liner. You're essentially going to paint over it. So what I'm doing now is I'm just starting to do little indications of where the actual shading is going to go. This is where I get into soft details. And then from here on, it's honestly a refining process. And a good way to easily mix your colors in Photoshop is to hold Alt. So you'll see that the that's the shortcut for the little eyedropper tool. You hold Alt and then you tap on a color and then you mess with the opacity on your brush. So if you want to blend this little chunk of the hair into the bigger chunk of the hair, you can go ahead and blend that. And then if you want to do that over here too, just pick a lighter chunk, holding the Alt key. And then there you go, you're blending. And you want to worry about midtones? you just blended one. So you don't need to spend all of your time over here in the color picker just making a mess. Although I would recommend, like, be, be very specific with your colors. <laughs> but you can hold the Alt key, and then you can just be using a color picker, naturally picking up colors that you're blending from the things that you created on your own. And there you go. It's already starting to look blendy. And honestly just repeat the process make sure you get the entire thing and it's not too fancy from here honestly from this point onwards it's just a question of refinement you are going to keep refining and working on edges but make sure that you get the general shading down first to work on the image as a whole and then zoom in <laughs> so get all of this right then you're allowed to zoom in and when you get to details like the eyes honestly just go above the sketch layer and paint over it that way you're you're getting this in, you're getting the placement right. And just remember not to paint on the actual reference itself. And when you get to a point that you don't need it anymore, just take out the opacity. But as you can see, this just looks terrifying and weird. <laughs> but anyway, um, 
that is the basic process. I'm just going to like skip into me actually working on this drawing now and you'll kind of see the process. It, it just makes more sense that way, I suppose. But I'm actually working on this and you'll see that I'm just working on big chunks and big colors, focusing on the actual shadow shapes of the drawing to make sure that those are right. And then I work on the details little by little. I'm toggling the transparency on and off. And depending on visibility of a background, you can actually change the opacity of your sketch layer. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So you'll see here I have my sketch layer. It's all in black. You can mess with the slider over here, but if you click on this little lock icon, this is an alpha lock. So if you click on this, you're actually going to be able to work only on the visible area. It's like a clipping mask, but inside of the layer itself. So if this isn't on and I'm on the sketch layer, I can draw outside of it. But if you click this on, then I can only draw inside the lines that I already have. Meaning, if I want this sketch to be red for whatever reason, say you want to change the color of your line art and you hate yourself for sketching it in post. Now, this is useful in situations like this, where your background is a mid-tone and your sketch is getting semi-difficult to see. What you can do is lock the alpha layer and then turn it to something like white, so it becomes more visible. Or, if you're working on a background that's already white, you can pick a mid-tone, you can essentially pick any color you want, and uh, there you go. You're going to be able to lock that layer in and work on it. And as soon as you want that to go away, you just press that button again, and then you're free to draw outside the lines again. So, yeah, hopefully that helped. <laughs> I'm just showing the rest of the speed painting process right now in the hopes that it'll kind of make sense. I am a firm believer of, like, learn by doing. <laughs> you don't learn by explaining, but maybe if I can explain some things to you, it'll change how you think about it, and then you can apply this to your own work. But hopefully that helped out. And if it did, by all means, then, you know, leave a like if it was helpful. And if you have any questions, just poke me in the comments. I'll be there. I'll answer them. Just be like, hey, I got really lost when you explained a thing. I'll probably tell you to rewind the video. But if you have a question about something else, just let me know. I think it'd be fun to hear back from you guys. Was this useful? Did it help? And by all means, share your drawings with me if you actually made something creative. I have a Discord where you can just pop up and throw things at me and be like, hey, I made this. So... <laughs> You can check that out. And if you thought that this was helpful, I explain stuff like this all the time when I'm actually streaming. And that'll be over on twitch.tv slash artfinity. I do stream weekly. So if you want to pop in and just say hi or just hang out or you're like incessant about learning and improving, then you could just throw things at me there and be like, I need help, teach me. <laughs> and I can explain it in greater detail there. But yeah, hopefully this video was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.